Combined Heat and Power Project Analysis This is the Combined Heat and Power Project Analysis training module of the RETScreen Clean Energy Project Analysis course. In this presentation, we examine the use of combined heat and power systems, such as the plant shown in this photo. Objectives This module has three objectives. These are, first, to review the basics of combined heat and power, or CHP, systems. Second, to illustrate key considerations in combined heat and power project analysis. And third, to introduce the RETScreen combined heat and power project model. What do combined heat and power systems provide? CHP systems provide both electricity and heat, and are sometimes called cogeneration systems as a result. The electricity can be used for loads on or near the site, or can be fed into the electric grid. The electric generation equipment in the CHP system is usually driven by the combustion of fuel, such as gas, diesel, or biomass. Part of the combustion heat cannot be used to generate electricity, the combined heat and power system recovers this heat, which would otherwise be wasted, and distributes it to nearby loads, such as buildings and industrial processes. A CHP system has a number of attractive attributes other than its ability to provide heat and power. These include increased efficiency, reduced waste, and reduced emissions. Normally the production of electricity is not especially efficient due to heat rejected to the environment. By making use of this wasted heat, the overall system efficiency is improved, and more useful energy is produced per unit of fuel. This in turn reduces total greenhouse gas and other pollution emissions. Since heat is not easily transported over long distances, CHP plants are normally located near heat loads and thus dispersed geographically. This often means that electricity is produced closer to the ultimate load than is the case with centralized power production, in which large plant service loads that may be quite distant. This so-called distributed generation can reduce losses incurred in the transmission of electricity. Combined heat and power developments can provide a source of energy, and heat in particular, for district energy systems. In district energy systems, a central plant distributes hot water or steam, and sometimes chilled water, to the buildings in its vicinity. This arrangement is more efficient than locating autonomous heating and cooling equipment in each building. Some CHP systems also provide cooling. The CHP system may drive conventional refrigeration equipment using a portion of its power output, or it may turn its heat output into cooling using absorption refrigeration equipment or desiccant dehumidifiers. In this way, increased demand for cooling during hot periods provides a heat load to make up for reduced space heating requirements. CHP System Motivation Electricity generation is inherently inefficient. One half to two thirds of the energy input to a typical generation system is wasted as heat rather than turned into electricity. This is the motivation for combined heat and power systems. Locate an electric power generating system near the heat load that will utilize the heat rejected from the generation equipment. This increases overall efficiency from the range of 25 to 55 percent to the range of 60 to 90 percent depending on the equipment and the application. The heat, which would otherwise be lost, can be used for industrial processes, space heating, water heating, cooling, or other purposes. The financial motivation for CHP plants often stems from the high value of the electricity produced. Electricity is more versatile and easily transported than heat, and thus commands a higher price. If a plant must be built to furnish heat to a load, it can make sense to invest slightly more in the plant so that it provides both heat and electricity. The figure on this slide shows that the quantity of heat wasted by thermal conversion plants is enormous around 25,000 terawatt hours worldwide in the year 2002. The figure also shows that fossil fuels, specifically coal, oil, and natural gas, drive the majority of the world's electricity generation, so improving efficiency can have major economic and environmental benefits. The CHP concept. This concept of using the waste heat from power generation equipment is illustrated by the diagram on this slide. The input to the system is 100 units of energy, embodied in fuel. 
This operates the power system, which drives an electrical generator. The output of this generator is 30 units of electrical energy. If this equipment were not part of a CHP system, the efficiency of the system would be therefore 30%, and 70% of the energy embodied by the fuel would be wasted as heat and exhaust. By adding a heat recovery steam generator, or HRSG, however, 55 units of useful heat can be extracted from this waste stream and fed to a heating load. The heat recovery efficiency is around 75 to 80 percent and the overall efficiency is therefore 85 percent. CHP Description Equipment and Technologies Combined heat and power systems make use of waste heat from power generation equipment. An essential component, therefore, is power generating equipment that rejects heat at a temperature high enough to be useful. Most CHP plants employ gas turbines, steam turbines, or reciprocating engines to drive their electrical generators, although more exotic technologies such as fuel cells are occasionally seen. A jet engine is an example of a gas turbine. A stream of inlet air is compressed, heat is added, generally by combustion of a gaseous or liquid fuel, and then the high pressure outlet stream turns a reaction turbine at high speed. The reaction turbine in turn drives a generator. A steam turbine is driven by high pressure steam generated in a boiler. Water in the boiler is raised to its boiling point by the addition of heat from combustion of one of a wide range of fuels. A gas turbine and a steam turbine can be placed in series in a so-called combined cycle plant. The hot exhaust gases of the gas turbine are used to generate steam for the steam turbine. In terms of power generation, this technology can achieve 55% efficiency. This is the most efficient combustion-based power generation technology. Reciprocating engines are well known to most people as the power plants in gasoline-fueled cars, which rely on the spark-ignited auto cycle, and diesel-fueled trucks which rely on the high temperature achieved during compression to cause ignition. Following ignition, the expansion of the combusting mixture drives a piston. These are the power generating technologies used in CHP plants. A second essential component of these plants is the waste heat recovery unit, which collects the waste heat from the power plant so that it can be delivered to heat loads. The nature of the waste heat recovery system depends on the type of power plant, the required temperature, and the characteristics of the heat load. Most applications requiring high temperature heat will demand steam, which can be produced using the hot exhaust gases of a gas turbine or reciprocating engine. This requires a heat recovery steam generator. Steam turbines can sometimes provide low grade steam at their exhaust port, otherwise it can be bled from the turbine as necessary. When only low temperature heat is available, it can be used to preheat water destined for steam generation. Low temperature heat can be conveniently transported from the plant to loads in streams of hot water. A heat exchanger recovers the waste heat from the power generation equipment. The hot water can be used directly, such as for domestic hot water, or for space heating. The temperature of the water can be raised somewhat by a heat pump, if necessary. CHP plants will often include dedicated heating systems to supply heat in combination with, or in addition to, that available from the power plant. These include boilers and furnaces. Where a cooling load is located near the CHP plant, cooling equipment may be included as part of the system. This may be vapor compression cycle refrigeration equipment, such as conventional chillers or heat pumps, that are driven by a portion of the CHP plant's power output. Alternatively, absorption refrigeration systems and desiccant dehumidifiers make use of the heat output of the plant. CHP description continued. Fuel types. CHP systems can, depending on the equipment used, operate on a wide variety of fuels. Fossil fuels, such as natural gas, diesel, and coal, are undoubtedly the most common fuels. Although the combustion of fossil fuels has negative environmental consequences, CHP plants are considered clean energy technologies due to their high efficiency. CHP systems can also run on biomass, as seen in the upper photo on this slide. 
Biomass includes wood bark, shavings, and chips. Biogas emitted by decomposing animal or plant waste, agricultural byproducts, and purpose-grown energy crops such as poplar and switchgrass. A byproduct of sugarcane refining, called bagasse, is widely used in Brazil. Landfills emit methane and other combustible gases as they decompose. A landfill can be capped and the emitted gas captured. This gas can run a CHP plant. At certain locations, heat from below the Earth's crust is available near the surface. This can give rise to volcanoes and geysers, such as the one pictured in this slide. This heat can also be used in CHP plants. Hydrogen is an energy carrier. It is produced using electricity or by processing conventional fossil fuels. It is one way to store electrical energy, generated by hydroelectric plants or wind turbines, for example. It can be combusted, but is particularly useful as a fuel for certain types of fuel cells. It is, therefore, a potential fuel for CHP systems. CHP description continued. Applications. CHP systems exist at a variety of scales. There are small systems for single buildings, such as the greenhouse seen on this slide. Larger systems serve commercial and industrial buildings or complexes, including the city hall shown here. Very large systems are found near large heat loads, such as industrial processes and whole communities utilizing district energy systems, as illustrated by the plant shown at the bottom of this slide. A heat distribution system transports heat from the building plant to the locations where it is required. These locations may be within the same building as the plant or, in the case of a district heating system, may be a cluster of buildings located in the vicinity of the plant. The consumers are often grouped in clusters of public, commercial and residential buildings located within a few hundred meters of each other. A network of insulated piping buried 60 to 80 centimeters below the surface of the ground, conveys water away from the plant at temperatures up to 130 degrees Celsius and returns the water, cooled to temperatures of 40 to 80 degrees, back to the plant for reheating. The pipes need not be buried below frost line since the pipes are insulated and contain circulating heated water. District heating systems can be made to transport chilled water for building cooling during summer. When they do such double service, the piping networks are referred to as district energy systems. A district energy system creates a sizable heat load for a CHP plant. With the waste heat of the power generation equipment substituting for the output of individual heating systems located in each of the buildings, overall efficiency is improved. Furthermore, compared with autonomous distributed heating plants, the centralized district energy system can offer better emissions controls more advanced safety systems, better comfort, and operating convenience. The initial costs of a district heating system are high. District heating is easiest to integrate into newly constructed communities and requires a high level of planning and organization. CHP system costs. CHP system costs vary widely from installation to installation. For example, the table on this slide lists the installed costs of various power generating technologies, many of which can be found in combined heat and power projects. However, these installed costs do not include many of the other initial costs that may be associated with the CHP system. Heating equipment, cooling equipment, electrical interconnection, access roads, and district energy piping. More importantly, the initial costs say nothing about the recurring costs, which may be even more significant. These include fuel, operation and maintenance, and equipment replacement and repair. CHP project considerations. The success of a CHP project is influenced by a number of risk factors. First, for equipment that is designed to be used with a particular fuel, there must be a reliable, long-term supply of that fuel. Second, Construction of the project must be carefully managed to keep capital costs from escalating beyond their budgeted levels. Third, the demand for heat and power has to be positively correlated. 
An on-site heat load requiring a large fraction of the annual heat output of the plant must be present. Otherwise, the waste heat will not be productively employed. Conversely, if the electricity cannot be all consumed on site, then the long-term sale of electricity onto the grid must be negotiated. The power plant should be sized such that its heat output is sufficient to meet the heating base load. The heat output of the system is typically 100 to 200 percent of the electricity output. Excess heat, especially during summer, when space heating loads decline, can be used for cooling through absorption chillers. Finally, the relative cost of electricity and fuel, especially natural gas, strongly influences the financial viability of a project. The difference between the price of electricity sold by a generator and the price of the fuel used to generate it, adjusted for equivalent units, is called the spark price spread. It must be positive for the operation of the CHP plant to be financially attractive. Example from Canada. Single buildings. Single buildings requiring both heat and a reliable power supply are excellent candidates for CHP plants. These include hospitals, schools, commercial buildings, and agricultural buildings. The CHP plant can provide cooling as well. The photos on this slide show the reciprocating engine power plant and exhaust heat recovery steam generator used in a hospital located in Ontario, Canada. Examples from Sweden and the USA. Multiple buildings. Clusters of buildings can be served by a single central heating, cooling, and power plant. This is often done for universities, industrial and commercial complexes, communities, and hospitals. In their most developed form, these are district energy systems. The pictures on this slide show a CHP district energy plant in Sweden and the 25 megawatt gas turbine used in a CHP plant at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA. Example from Brazil. Industrial processes. Industries with a high constant heating or cooling demand are good candidates for CHP developments. This is especially true for industries that produce waste material that can be used as a fuel, such as the bagasse byproduct of the sugar cane refinery seen in this photo. The diagram shows how the waste heat from a gas turbine combined cycle power plant can satisfy an industrial heat load. Examples from Canada and Sweden. Landfill gas. Landfills produce methane as waste decomposes. The landfill can be capped and the gas collected for use as a fuel in cooling, heating, or power projects. The diagram on this slide shows schematically the use of landfill gas at a plant near Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The photo shows a Swedish CHP plant fueled with landfill gas and connected to a district heating system. The Red Screen CHP Project Model The Red Screen CHP Project Model provides an analysis of the energy production, life cycle costs, and greenhouse gas emissions for a CHP system located anywhere in the world. All combinations of power, heating, and cooling systems can be analyzed. Virtually all power generating technologies and fuels are permitted, and different operating strategies can be employed. There are even tools for landfill gas production and district energy systems. The software is available in many different languages and it is possible to change from one language to another with a simple switch. Another switch permits the use of either metric or imperial units. The RETSCREEN CHP project model continued. RETSCREEN can model systems using virtually any combination of heating, cooling, and power generation. This is illustrated by the diagram on this slide, which shows the input of fuel to the system, the flow of heat and electricity, and the production of heat, cooling, and power. RETSCREEN CHP Project Model for Heating Systems the RETSCREEN CHP project model accommodates systems incorporating multiple heat sources. For example, 
The diagram on this slide shows the average heating load, cooling load, and power generation for each month of the year for a particular CHP system. The heating load peaks in the winter months and the cooling load peaks in the summer months. The heating load is supplied by three different systems. A base load heating system, an intermediate load heating system, and a peak load heating system. The peak load heat source runs relatively infrequently and therefore should be characterized by low capital costs, even if that results in somewhat elevated operating costs. In contrast, the base load will usually be met by waste heat recovery, which entails minimal operating costs. RET Screen CHP Project Model for Cooling Systems The RET Screen CHP project model can similarly accommodate plants incorporating multiple cooling systems. On this slide, the plant includes a base load cooling system and a peak load cooling system. Different technologies could be used for base and peak load cooling. One could be an absorption chiller and the other a vapor compression cycle chiller, for example. RETSCREEN CHP Project Model for Power Systems The RETSCREEN CHP Project Model permits multiple power generation sources as well. Here a base load power, intermediate load power, and peak load power generator are included. The user can select the operating strategy for the power generation equipment. For example, in this system, the user can require the intermediate load power generator to operate at maximum power all the time, at the level that supplies the power load that is in excess of the base load, or at the level that satisfies the heat load. RET Screen CHP Energy Calculation In overview, the RET Screen CHP Energy Calculation starts by estimating load and demand curves over the course of the year. These will vary depending on whether heating, cooling, power generation, or a combination of these are involved. Then the equipment characteristics, and in particular their fuel requirements per unit of load, are defined. Finally, RETSCREEN calculates the energy delivered and the corresponding fuel consumption. Example Validation of the RETSCREEN CHP Project Model The overall validity of the RETSCREEN CHP model was established in tests conducted by an independent consultant, FVB Energy Incorporated, and by numerous beta testers from industry, utilities, government, and academia. It was also compared with other models and measured data. The table on this slide shows good agreement between one part of the model, the steam turbine performance calculations, and the output of a GE Energy process simulation software called GateCycle. Conclusions CHP systems make efficient use of heat that would otherwise be wasted. In this way, they reduce the fuel required to meet a combination of heat and power loads. Since these loads are normally met by fossil fuels, this reduces greenhouse gas emissions. With minimal input from the user, RETSCREEN can determine demand and load duration curves, energy delivered, and fuel consumption for various combinations of heating, cooling, and power systems. It thus significantly reduces the time, effort, and cost of conducting preliminary feasibility studies. This is the end of the Combined Heat and Power Project Analysis Training Module in the Ratsgreen International Clean Energy Project Analysis course.